Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Today we are broadcasting live from Alberta Municipalities Convention and Trade Show here in beautiful Red Deer, Alberta. Over the last 24 hours, we have been speaking to municipal leaders from across this great province to hear from them exactly what they're hoping to take away from this three-day convention. And also in the highly anticipated speeches from Premier Daniel Smith and newly elected leader, Alberta NDP leader, Nahid Nenshi. We will have those events and those speeches tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. But today, we have recapped all that has taken place on day one of the convention. Um, Mayor Johnston, Alberta municipalities are in your backyard, in your community right now. A thousand delegates from across the province. How does it feel to host such an event and so many great municipal leaders? Well, uh, you know, outside of the obvious economic impact of 1,100 visitors for three days, I'll, I'll say this. What it enables us to do is bring what, a, what I would call a major, major convention, of, you know, away from the cities and enjoy a little bit of small town or small city, if you will, uh, networking. It's amazing in a smaller center how councillors, mayors, administrators uh, come together in, a, in what I would call a bit of a less formal uh, type uh, setting. So I'm really looking forward, as I said to the delegates today, to really deepen those uh, networking opportunities and so on. This is a, this is a tough role. The, the role of a municipal politician is a tough role, probably the toughest I've ever seen it. So it's all about collaboration and bonding and being together. That's really what the theme is. And so. It's also a big economic driver for your community tourism. Your hotels are booked right now. I didn't know you wanted to bring out the capitalist in me today, but you know, we're bringing out the capitalist, let's do it, is right. I mean, this is a major, major event for Red Deer. If this was a sporting event, this would be a national event uh, with, with this kind of uh, delegates. I, I said to my wife uh, a few days ago, we lost the CFR last year, but here we are bringing 1,100 delegates to the city, uh, arguably with a similar economic impact and uh, and so on. So, no, it's not lost on us. I think Red Deer is going to shine uh, over the next couple of days. Our hospitality sectors, uh, in, without a doubt, uh, our retail sectors uh, and so on uh, are, are going to have a, a wonderful uh, three, four days for sure. Last question before you, I let you go here, and that is, what are you hoping that the delegates take away from Red Deer? Because you talk about your hospitality, is there a spirit of friendliness that you're hoping that the delegates will take away back to their own communities? Oh, no question. I, I remember when they were here in 2018, which was the first time we hosted in, in 2018, and they did leave with that, that sort of feeling that this is a venue that we want to come back to for all the reasons we talked about, the hospitality side of it, the ability to network, that less formality uh, and so on. You know, but I, but I would say on the, on the Alberta Muni sort of collaboration piece, my hope is, as I said today, that people understand that an issue in a summer village is not that much different than an issue in an, in an urban center and, and that we get to understand each other's point of view a lot, a lot more. Some of the major speeches that happened on day one of the convention was Minister of Municipal Affairs Rick McIver bringing greetings from the provincial government to the delegates. Well, good afternoon. It's nice to be here. And uh, I don't know about you, I heart munis, do you? So this is about you, but just for a minute and a half, it's going to be about me. And I'll tell you why. Uh, as we were coming up here today, before we did the, uh, the entrance in, uh, the piper, Tyler, Tyler Wallace, great job, right? He is with the Red Deer Fire Department. And, yeah, and I noticed, I happened to notice, that uh, there was a different tartan on his kilt from the one on her on his scarf. And the reason I noticed that is the tartan on his scarf is the, wait for it, the McIver tartan. I'm not making this up. So I, of course, asked him about that. And uh, he wanted me, and I asked him if I had permission to tell it, and he said, tell everybody and make sure you're loud and proud about it. So on behalf of Tyler and the Red Deer Fire Department, they are forming a pipe band. And as part of their pipe band, they have adopted the McIver Tartan. So, welcome to the clan, Mayor Ken. 
Okay, that's enough about me. I'm sure we all can agree on that, but that was fun. Uh, listen, we, this is a great gathering. I certainly know how important this is after spending eight years on the board for uh, AB Munis back in uh, the days when I was on a municipal council. So I know how hard you work. And I know how important the work you do is. And in fact, I would still know now that, that I used to win the arguments when I was on a municipal council, and municipal councillors could always win the argument about who does more important work if you're in a municipal government, a provincial government, or a federal government, and it always comes down to who can, who can stop picking up your garbage and shut off your sewage. The municipal person always wins those arguments about whose work is more important. But you do a lot more than that. You deal with, you know, you, all, you know all the things you, you uh, deal with, looking after parks, social services, uh, the, the local roads, certainly all the, the local animal complaints, bylaws, all those things. Are those things that matter to people? And I know that you all work hard at it. So let me say, you're going to hear from me more later. So I was told to be brief here, and especially after indulging myself, I'll be, I'll shut it, I'll cut it off a little bit quicker now. Thank you. If there's only two words you remember from this is thank you. I know you work hard. I know it can be thankless, but I do know there's about 5 million people in Alberta that depend upon you to do a great job every day of the year, and their lives would be so much worse if you weren't there representing them and doing those things that they need done. So I'll talk to you later, but for now, thank you. Also on hand was FCM third vice president, filling in for Jeff Stewart, who is the president of the organization. She brought greetings from the municipal organization, the Canadian-wide municipal organization, to this Red Deer Convention. Well, I just have to say kudos to these two, because it's not easy to chair, but to co-chair and be in sync like that is pretty impressive. And uh, if municipal politics don't work out for you, you guys should get a talk show or something, because you're, you're pretty good up here, ladies. So, hello, everyone. I'm happy to be able to address federal from the federal Canadian municipalities, all of you Alberta municipalities today, on behalf of our president, Jeff Stewart, who Jeff is in the midst of his municipal election campaign in Colchester County, Nova Scotia. Last week we had the opportunity to spend a week with Jeff and he is working so very hard for this municipal election and I'm sure all of us here are wishing him good luck, Jeff. My thanks to Mayor Gandam for the invitation today. It is a real pleasure to be able to compare notes with Alberta municipal leaders and compare them with Thompson, Manitoba, Northern Manitoba, which is my hometown. Needless to say, our communities actually have a whole lot in common. I'd also like to note the importance of gathering in the month of September and the upcoming National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. And I thank you and I respect the land acknowledgement that we started our afternoon off with today. In this context at FCM, we are actively working to develop a more meaningful reconciliation strategy based on respect, understanding and shared progress. And to share with you last week, the executive and the board, we did spend a bit of time for a whole day on reconciliation and what our path forward is gonna look like. And we will be sharing that with you in the months to come. But all that being said, right now with a federal election somewhere in the horizon, it is a really interesting time to be addressing a PTA meeting today. And I'm sure a lot of us have our eyes on our phones and we're wondering what's gonna happen next. But being a deputy mayor myself, I know that you and myself and everyone, we've got plenty of local issues that are demanding some immediate attention. And for us at FCM, we see this current federal situation as a true window of opportunity, no matter who makes up the next government. And why? Because we see it as an opportunity to put Canadians' needs front and centre, with an upcoming election acting as a spotlight on our biggest priorities. Municipal leaders, all of you here today have a role to play as local champions. And FCM will make sure that the great work you do and that you are doing in your communities as well as your needs are in the spotlight this fall and all through the winter. As the government of proximity, we know that Canadians are struggling and boy do we know it and we see it with an affordability crisis and the cost of living. For over a year now, FCM has been making the case that by reapproaching how we fund municipalities, we can give struggling families a boost in their quality of life. 
We can ensure that they have that crucial infrastructure like roads, water, parks and recreation facilities and essential local services they can rely on. However, increasingly we are seeing municipal infrastructure like the roads and the water facilities and our public transit are more and more under pressure. When these assets fail, and let's be clear, they are failing in our communities. They endanger Canadians. They seriously impact our quality of life, local economies, and it's putting enormous pressure on our municipal budgets. The seriousness of water infrastructure failure in our communities was made clear this summer, right here in Alberta, with the major ongoing water main breakage in Calgary during the FCM convention. But the challenge for water infrastructure, it's in smaller cities and in rural communities, and it's much the same. Canadian municipalities continue to face an urgent funding shortfall that has to repair and renew our existing municipal water and wastewater infrastructure. It is so vital for budget 2025 to allot additional near-term funding for municipal water and wastewater infrastructure. We have to avoid the kind of infrastructure failures like we have seen this past summer. We also know that Canadians remain deeply concerned about housing affordability. Put simply, we need to build more homes and we need to build them quickly to accommodate our growing population. And while doing this, we have to prevent and address the homelessness that we are now seeing in our communities across Canada. Increasing the supply of standard housing is only one part of the solution. We also need to tackle housing affordability by steadily increasing the supply of non-profit housing by building on the measures contained in Canada's housing plan. When the resources aren't there to address this homelessness, it's impacting our public safety and our community well-being. Municipal policing costs are often our biggest rising budget items and they are increasingly hard for municipalities to bear. My own personal municipality has a population of 13,000 people. We have the largest RCMP contract in the province of Manitoba. It eats up over $6 million of our budget. We cannot sustain it anymore. With an effective approach in place, police re resources could be refocused on growing public safety challenges in our community, like the property theft and violent crime, which are deeply concerning to our residents. Now all of these things that I've outlined, there is a way that we can unlock progress in all of them. And that key is called the Municipal Growth Framework. The current municipal revenue model dates back to Confederation in 1867, a time when people rode carts and lit their homes by candlelight. What an impact statement. I read that often and I think, this is just crazy, we have to fix this. Municipalities provide important services and infrastructure but we are only getting eight to 10 cents for every tax dollar? We're not calling for anything beyond a fair share of the existing tax dollar so we can actually deliver what Canadians need. We have been clear that this cannot go on. The impacts on Canadians is far too great. And that's why we are advocating for a sit down with all orders of government so we can ensure communities get the predictable, sufficient funding they need to deliver for their residents. Only with that kind of reform can we build, maintain, and consistently deliver the infrastructure and services that make a real difference to Canadians' quality of life every day. Only with that kind of reform can we move beyond these short-term needs and support a brighter future for Canadians for the long term. As I mentioned, FCM stands ready to engage with all federal parties to better support the needs of Canada's municipalities. This is informing our ongoing advocacy in the run-up to both the fall economic statement and budget 2025. I do want to recognize the efforts that so many local leaders in this room, as Alberta municipalities and FCM members, have made to address and tackle these issues. It's hard work. Thank you for being municipal champions and for delivering day in and day out. For FCM's part, no matter what happens over the coming months or the year, we will continue to highlight Canadians' needs and the most effective ways to deliver for everyone in our communities throughout this busy fall and winter season. And before I officially close, dear Alberta, I have to tell, us, tell you a personal connection to you. My oldest son went to the University of Lethbridge on a hockey scholarship 
and played in nationals a few years ago, met and married a girl from Claire's home who now resides in northern Manitoba, and her sisters from Claire's home now reside in northern Manitoba. I apologize for decreasing your population, but they've been great advocates in my community, and I would love to touch base with if there's anybody here from Claire's home in Lethbridge today. Thank you very much. Safe travels home. We also caught up with Alberta NDP Municipal Affairs critic Kyle Kozowski and heard from him directly about what the municipal leaders tomorrow will be hearing in Nahid Nenshi's speech. Kyle, uh, Alberta Municipalities, Municipal Affairs critic for the Alberta NDP, you've already been meeting with delegates. What are you hearing already from them only on day one? We well, you know, uh, just even to start back, it's been a year since the last convention, so I'm so happy to be here. And so much has changed in the landscape of municipalities uh, in Alberta since the last convention. They have their funding now set out that the formula that was, was being promised at the last convention is now set out. And we all know that they're not getting enough money. So that's being heard. They're feeling stretched. And they're also feeling a little put out. You know, they're feeling uh, put up against the, the wall and, and pushed down upon by the provincial government. And then not being heard by the provincial government or the federal government and feeling unrecognized for the work they're doing even though you know the minister might get up and say you know thank you the reality is councils and mayors of municipalities are feeling pushed and pressured by the provincial government and that's what we're hearing here tomorrow which is when this airs is going to be today uh your leader the newly elected leader uh, Nahid Nenshi will be giving his speech in front of the almost 1100 delegates do you have an do you have an idea of what he's going to be talking about or can you give us a preview of what his speech is going to message to the delegates will be you know i think i'm going to have to let you wait until but i think we want to recognize that municipalities of all sizes are feeling uh, a lot of different pressure like they and they're feeling issues like we wouldn't have expected Westlock to be dealing with a homeless issue and that's something you might have just thought it was a big city issue but we're going to see hamlets and villages and cities they're all got a lot of the same issues and so we want to make sure that everyone knows we recognize that there are a lot of similarities in the things we need to deal with um, you know and I think we want to be talking about how to get back to good governance and making municipalities feel like they are partners and validated by the provincial government. So I think we'll probably get some hints of that and maybe a look forward to what you can expect. When you have someone who is a very experienced uh, person with municipal government now running to be a premier in Alberta, I think it should be a well-received message. Well, and that was my last question is, do you believe that now with Nahid Nenshi as the leader, former three-term uh, mayor of uh, the city of Calgary, that municipalities do have a partner in this party? I think it, they certainly feel like they have someone that knows what they're going through and that knows their files and knows their pressures and, and can definitely hear and understand what they're going through and then bring the solutions to them because he does like that work of solving the issues. So I think, I think it's, a, you know, what I think, what I'm getting the sense of from the leaders here is they're very excited about having the former mayor of Calgary, a former member of the Alberta municipalities as a leader of provincial party and finally like we did on day one we spoke to delegates from across the province to hear directly from them and one particular stood out was william purdy former mla and former president of auma who has been attending these events for 38 years uh, Bill, uh, Alberta Municipalities Convention over the next three years, former past president, we were just talking off the record here, but 38 years you've been coming to these events, has it changed much over those 38 years? It's changed immensely. We've gone to um, areas of the province years ago that uh, could accommodate, but besides the way that the province has increased, the number of people that are on municipal council and the interest that's there, we've had to look at bigger centers. So that's right now is Red Deer, Edmonton and Calgary, generally which where we uh, go to. I've been talking to a lot of the delegates over the last few, well, today and yesterday when they started to arrive, and I'm hearing the same few common macro issues, infrastructure, housing, funding. Are these similar issues to when you were president that you're, they're dealing with today? Yeah, municipalities, you know, they, they've got more and more responsibilities, but they, why they're there is for all for the same reason, is to provide services for people. 
And uh, so that's changed a lot over the years. It's got more intense, it's got more uh, viability to it and so on. Like the insurance program that we're into, that we partner also with the rural municipalities. And it's, you know, it's a good cooperation that way. And uh, we're also uh, part of the FCM, uh, where the president of the association is a, also an, a director there. So things have really immensely changed here at the, across this province. You have seen many premiers and leaders of the official opposition give speeches to delegates and in your time, I can imagine. Premier Smith, Nahid Nenshi will be giving their speeches tomorrow during the event. What makes a good pitch from a provincial leader to municipal leaders? Because you've probably heard the good, the bad, and sometimes the ugly speeches given to these delegates. Well, I think that uh, municipal councillors, they're pretty well tied to the system and they understand what's going there. So the people that are coming to these conventions and so on, they don't come here with a chip on their shoulder or anything. They come here as a part of the support group that uh, is there that may have been instrumental in getting the, elect the government, the provincial government elected and other facets of it. So they're a, a very strong partner with the Department of Municipal Affairs and other agencies in the province. What makes a good strong advocate for a local municipality in your mind as a former president, as a former councillor, even as a former MLA? What makes a good advocacy council, advocate council? I think that that is to be out and with the people, to be there and, and uh, support in a way that you can see that the support would be forthcoming. And uh, I think the availability, and this is where I get got complaints over the years that I can't get a hold of my counselor. And uh, I've even heard that a couple of times here just recently that in this particular case, this counselor is not returning my call. And I just said, well, phone the CEO or phone the mayor. And my final question for you here, Bill, and you have been to many of these. What should delegates be taking away from the next three days at this convention? Is there something that you take away every single time you come to these conventions that you wish they do as well? Yes, and I think that that is positivity. You walk out of here saying, boy, was that a great convention. And uh, you, you still have the, uh, the aspect or the uh, right to send a letter to the, the uh, chair of the board of the, or the, whoever is the president of the association outlining what you think could be different. And that really is open, open government. Councillor, day one of Alberta municipalities, what are you hoping to take away from the next three days? Oh man, I always love the sessions. I like the breakout sessions. So already I've been learning about water, uh, which is very critical to Airdrie since we're so tightly tied to Calgary. Uh, and we got to make strategies for the long term and we're looking at building some infrastructure to make that happen. So that's huge. And then I'm going to be heading to another session on electricity and what that's going to mean for us going forward as well. So lots of sessions that I really love there, um, but I definitely like the networking the most because I'm always interested to hear how everybody is facing the challenges that are presented to municipalities today and six months from now and down the road. Yeah, you ripped the bandaid off, so I'm going to play in the sandbox for a little bit, but you talked about water. Uh, Calgary lifted its water restrictions, therefore Airdrie did as well. How do you think the people of Airdrie handled the last few weeks of water restrictions? They were amazing. Uh, the recommendation and the request was that we reduce our water usage by 25% between residences and commercial. We had an average uh, reduction day over day of somewhere between 28 and 29% of water use. So Airdrie stepped up. They always do. Uh, it was amazing and now we're back to taking long showers and watering our lawns. <laughs> of course, uh, that's the first thing I did as well. Um, tomorrow morning, or tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon, two big speeches will be done here in uh, the convention, and that is Premier Daniel Smith and NDP leader Nahid Nenshi. Is there anything you are looking for as a councillor, as the representative of your community, that they will hopefully address tomorrow during their speeches? 
You know, I think the elephant in the room is that there is affordability issues and healthcare issues. And even though healthcare is not a municipal purview, um, it's affecting the people in our communities and they're coming to us begging for advocacy. So I am really interested to see what comes up in terms of solutions and strategies and tangible action items that can be done by this government. And personally, I'm just tired of the party politics. I just want to see them both say what they're going to do, what's going to make this province amazing and less about the other party, the other leader and what they are or aren't doing right. And then on Friday, the final day is the unofficial official bear pit session where delegates like yourself will be able to ask the direct questions to the ministers. Do you have a question locked and loaded before a particular minister or does Airdrie have something that up their sleeve to prepare themselves for the bear pit session or are you just hoping to hear something about water, about infrastructure, about working collaboratively like you just talked about? Yeah, you know, I think we've got some really good groups representing at the Bear Pit, like Midsize City Mayors is going to be asking some questions that are going to represent some of the things that Airdrie has interest in. Where I really find the most benefit is in our conversations one-on-one -on -one with the ministers and the leaders anyway, so that's where we have our big asks and uh, long, long-standing conversations and progress check-ins. So Bear Pit is super valuable, always a little interesting, a little bit of us sitting on the edge of your seat. You pay for the whole seat, but you're only using the edge, as I like to say. Uh, so I enjoy it just as a watch, but um, I like to watch the other questions happen. And I know a lot of us have the same and similar questions on our minds. You're heading home on Friday as the last day. What is the one thing that you take away from these conventions that you bring back to your own community to ensure that the last three days wasn't a waste and you can take back a tangible item to do in your community? Yeah, that's a big one. Um, I think it's important because this is a big investment to be here, right? For me, it's always education. My goal is always to come away with new feedback, new information, progress reports. So when I'm going back to those um, you know, organizations in the community that have questions or concerns around certain things that are going on right now, I like to be able to come back and say, okay, here's what we know, here's what we learned. I know for Airdrie, affordable housing is huge and I've already been making some headway in the last 24 hours and I look forward to rubbing some elbows with a few more people to see what else we can shake out of this uh, this week. Uh, Councillor, Alberta Municipalities Day 1, what are you hoping to take away from this three-day convention? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, as I head to the uh, social media and respect uh, sessions that we can actually find a center for what seems to be a very divided Alberta. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can learn to love again. One of the big key takeaways from this three-day event is Premier Smith's uh, speech tomorrow on Thursday, Nahid Nenshi's speech tomorrow on Thursday, and then the Bear Pit session. Is there anything you're looking from the provincial government with what you just said about social media that you're hoping that the Premier or the leader of the official opposition or even the ministers will address in their speeches? I'm hoping that we gain a little bit of collaborative access. Um, I know we sat with uh, the Minister of Immigration here short, shortly, uh, let's try that again, the Minister of Immigration a couple of weeks ago, uh, only to hear that we were the, the last group uh, that they were actually speaking with. Uh, then the immigration uh, policy came out a week later uh, with with little to or nothing to do with anything that was actually spoken about in the rooms uh, so I, I i hope that our provincial officials will actually start listening to the municipalities again uh, if if we're going to collaborative meetings uh, i hope that the policies aren't set beforehand and my final question what locally will you hopefully take away from today and bring back to claire's home when you arrive back on friday morning or friday afternoon depending on when you do arrive um, Clairsome is uh, a leader with uh, uh, municipally led immigration. Uh, we're a member of the only Alberta community that's involved with the Rural Northern Immigration Pilot Project that just wound up looking at the new federal program that's coming out. Uh, with that comes growth issues. Uh, uh, and infrastructure issues for housing and so on. Uh, so it's very important that with the knowledge that we need population growth in order to 
accomplish what Alberta is going to become in the next 10 years, uh, that we also invest back into those municipalities that, that are going to be providing those services. So that's what I'm hoping we take back. Councillor, you're at the Alberta municipalities for the next three days. Is there anything that you're looking to take back or take from the next three days? Well, as always, I really appreciate seeing my colleagues from across the province. Uh, I sit on a couple provincial committees, so connecting with them, um, and in particular, those are on social issues. So I'm really looking forward to having conversations about funding through uh, Family Community Support Services. There's a resolution coming forward asking for $130 million. We've actually re-indexed that number, so I'm bringing forward an amendment to the newly indexed number, uh, which would have the provincial government uh, contributing $161 million in 2025 to preventative social services. Speaking of tomorrow, besides the resolutions, there are two major speeches, one from Danielle Smith, one from Nahid Nenshi, uh, NDP leader. What are you hoping to hear from the leaders? I know the city of Calgary and the province have been in a bit of a tiff. Mom and dad are fighting right now. But is there anything that you're looking forward to hearing from the premier or even the leader of the NDP? I, I think what I'm really looking forward to hearing is, as we know, the provincial government's going to be going into another massive surplus year, five to $10 billion. Um, okay, great, sock some money aside. How are you going to invest in the critical infrastructure that all municipalities need? That is everything from roads um, to the underground utility infrastructure um, to rec and social programs that so many of our other smaller municipalities are desperately needing. Um, but as well, how are you looking forward to creating budgets um, from a base and from a tax perspective that support daily needs of Albertans? Speaking of the surplus, one of the big infrastructure issues that have come out recently is a $8.6 billion investment into schools, and that means schools in Calgary. That means that the city is going to have to prepare that infrastructure to get those schools built. Is the city prepared for that? I mean, the city is always setting aside land for this, um, but we always have to understand what are then the operating costs to deliver water to those schools, and how does that add to the tax base and burden? Uh, I think there is positives to be had from this. Again, though, schools only work when you have staffing. Schools only work when you have teachers. Schools only work when you have EAs uh, and when you have bus drivers. So it is not as simple as putting up a building. It's really about looking about the long-term supporting infrastructure, and that comes from base tax dollars, not just capital one-time funds. What's the last question for you? And what's the one thing you're hoping to take away from this weekend that you are going to be able to bring back to council or to the community of Calgary and say, while I was there, this is what we got done? Yeah, I think um, a lot of the votes coming out of the resolutions, again, about cost downloading, I think one of the big things that's coming out that a lot of mun municipalities are raising, sort of the flag on that it's a real cost burden is going to be the tabulators um, around votes. And when I saw the number that Red Deer came out at over a million dollars, it made me stop because our projection for Calgary was a million, which means at a city that is 10 times that population, we are now looking at 10 times that cost. That is cost directly to taxpayers. And uh, that is a really important conversation we need to have a, a, about the cost downloading that the provincial government is doing to municipalities. Yeah. Councillor, Alberta Municipalities Convention, three-day event. What are you hoping to take away from the next three days? You know what, uh, above all, the sessions are always uh, so, so great and so diverse, but for me it's always about the great opportunity to get together with your peers around the province and kind of, you know, share your stories, collaborate and find different solutions. So for me, yeah, it's all about that great chance to, uh, to meet other hardworking public servants around the province. One of the big events that takes place over the next three days is the speech from Premier Daniel Smith, the speech from Nahid Nenshi, leader of the uh, Alberta NDP, but also Minister McIver and the f always fun bear pit session. Is there anything that you're looking at the provincial government to address or talk about in their speeches or even in the bear pit session? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really important for me that we start to continue to increase the profile of municipalities to our provincial leadership um, because a lot of the uh, you know Alberta's calling campaign we are seeing the huge growth pressures uh, Cochrane has been experiencing that for a number of years but we really do need uh, uh, provincial support to fulfill um, what has been sold so uh, we're looking at more details um, on the support for you know schools but also you know long-term care facilities uh, housing, affordable housing, transportation, all of those pressures that come with rapidly growing communities. So really looking to uh, get some clarity from the different leaders on their take on that. And then also uh, looking to see um, 
that the leaders value what municipalities uh, bring to the table and being a willing partners. You talk about one of the things that we've talked about on the show, and that is infrastructure of money. And you talked about education. The province just came out with a eight point some billion dollar injection into education, meaning more schools in areas around Calgary, in the greater Edmonton area. But you don't build schools, you build the infrastructure that goes to those schools. Are you looking at the provincial government to potentially give you money to potentially help with the growth that you're seeing? Yeah, in, in any piece of it. So it was great to see that uh, that announcement and then that understanding that we need to be uh, supporting our education system. Uh, but yeah, the municipality is just one of, uh, you know, one of the partners in that story. It's our role to make sure we've kind of got uh, land that's shovel ready so that working with our school board partners in the province um, that we can collaboratively come to that solution. But none of that happens overnight. Um, Cochrane, I think, has done a great job. We were just having a conversation about what sites we have that are shovel ready. Um, but there's a lot of municipalities out there that are competing for those those dollars and have that need. Uh, in the Cochrane context, uh, you know, transportation is key. We're working through the build out of the 22 1A right now. Um, but there's future infrastructure needs along the 22 corridor that we're looking to partner with them as well and then in the Cochrane context uh, as the province is looking at uh, uh, flood mitigation measures along the Bow River the impacts of Cochrane so we're going to be having conversations with uh, provincial reps about that as well so lots of great conversations to have here and it's always appreciated that opportunity to, as you say at the barefoot sessions to be able to uh, put the ministers on their toes and then also the great opportunity to have those one-on-ones uh, directly with the ministers and our municipalities booked a number of those and we're looking forward to those conversations you'll be heading back to cochrane on friday if not friday morning friday afternoon after the event wraps up is there one thing that you're hoping that you're going to be able to take away from this three-day convention that you're going to be able to bring back and best practice it in cochrane you know, I don't know if there's one particular one to take back. Um, I've done this job for a number of years, so it's always great, uh, you know, to see what other municipalities, where we have the similarities, where we have the differences, and where we can come together. Um, and, you know, the one of the sessions that's happening right now is all around, you know, collaboration and a sense of humor. And uh, for me, I really love and appreciate the opportunity to you know, serve the public this way. Um, but the only way I think maybe to, to stay sane doing it is to maintain that sense of humor. So I'm looking forward to that session. Mayor, um, you're here at Alberta Municipalities for the three-day convention. What are you hoping to take away from the next three days? Uh, just definitely look at some uh, new initiative, uh, what people are doing, and so maybe some uh, cost efficiencies in terms of uh, programming, uh, services, uh, building a little bit more affordable housing in our communities. Like, um, How are other uh, municipalities are tackling that? Because uh, as municipalities, uh, we all face the same challenges. So definitely learning from other municipalities that have um, taken on these challenges, um, it's good for us. One of the big key events that happens during this three-day convention is one, uh, Premier Daniel Smith speaks, Nahid Nenshi is going to give his first speech to delegates. What are you hoping to hear from the party leaders that will you will perk your ears a little bit and say, okay, they've said what I want to hear at this convention? Definitely the, uh, the willingness to work with municipalities. I think uh, municipalities are a creation of the MGA, which is the provincial government, uh, but we provide a lot of services for the residents. Make sure that the, the provincial government is willing to work with municipalities and not uh, kind of be beholden to them versus uh, working in collaboration. And going back to Stony Plain on Friday, is there one thing that you're going to take away? Even if it's one of the sessions, is there one thing that you're going to be able to take away and say, okay, even though it was three days, I'm able to take this and bring it back to better practice for the Stony, uh, people of Stony Plain? Well, definitely. I think the, the next uh, sem seminar I'm taking is on um, building more affordable housing in the community. I think like Stony Plain, like many other municipalities, are growing at a really rapid pace, and we are having a hard time keeping up with those. So looking to see what kind of options there are, what grant dollars there are, and maybe you know, partner with a third party or... or or kind of special needs organization to make sure that we're able to address those uh, housing needs. You, you've mentioned a few times money, growth, population. The provincial government has given money to the education to build new schools in many different communities, especially in the greater Edmonton region, which you were part of. Um, Growth does not just come in school, it means housing as well. You've talked about housing. Is there one thing that you're looking for from Minister Nixon, Housing Minister, or Minister McIver, Minister of Municipal Affairs, to address or even speak to you in a potential one-on-one -on -one conversation that will let you know that they're taking the housing crisis serious? 
Yeah, for sure, definitely with uh, Minister Nixon. Uh, like, housing is a huge uh, impact on all of us, especially with the Alberta's Calling campaign. People are coming to Alberta because they see the advantages of living in Alberta. Well, you can't uh, have people coming without housing. So hopefully that uh, the envelope increases a little bit more to allow a little more of the kind of the surrounding areas, not, not just Edmonton and Calgary, but the surrounding areas around those donuts, to say that we're addressing those needs and we need that, that financial support to, to actually build those. And in terms of like the, uh, with uh, Mr. McIver, with the LGFF, right? Uh, great frame, framework, it's gonna go, you know, go and really enhance our communities in the future, but we just need the envelope a little bit, a little bit larger. Councillor, you're on day one of Alberta municipalities. What are you hoping to take away from the next three days as a municipal leader in High Prairie? You know, the best part about the Alberta Munis Conference is always the, the sessions that you get to go to, you learn things, and the connections you can meet and the people that you meet and the people that you talk to in the hallways. And it's like, hey, I've got this problem. Geez, I've got the same problem. And now you're like, well, you brainstorm and you solve the problem. One of the big events that takes place over the next three days is the speeches from Premier Smith and NDP leader Nahid Nenshi. Is there anything you're looking for for the party leaders to discuss in their speeches to you tomorrow? It'd be really interesting to hear the truth. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, they say some silly things sometimes, all of them. You know, all of them say things that are demonstrably false and I would like to hear the truth for a change from all of them. And then on Friday you have the, uh, the probably the biggest event of the session and that is the bear pit session where delegates will be able to direct questions directly to ministers from across different uh, portfolios. Is there anything that you're hoping to hear from the ministers or will you be asking any questions of the ministers? We do have a couple of meetings private meetings with ministers to do with, um, well, the YAC specifically in, in High Prairie. We want to make sure that we keep that open and also we're working on our houselessness situation. We need to find a solution for this. This isn't just a High Prairie problem. It's not even just an Alberta problem. This is a Canada problem. So hopefully we can find some solutions to this problem. What do you think is the solution that you, as a councillor for your community, is are doing in your community to address the issue? Well, I mean, initially, it's we have to get the support of the provincial and the federal government because no one community can solve this problem on their own. Be sure to tune in tomorrow and hit that subscribe button because tomorrow we will have reaction from the premier speech and the leader of the official opposition speeches. But also, we'll be talking directly to Tyler Gandum about what has transpired over the last 24 hours and some of the resolutions that were passed and rejected from day two of the Alberta Municipalities Convention. So until next time...